Give it up for the worship you team. You guys can stand as we go into a time of worship, and we'll, we'll sing the song together.
we invite you into this space. We thank you that you will show us um, what it is for us to learn today, what it is that you're wanting us to take into our week. So speak to us. Um, we invite you into this place and we thank you for this opportunity to gather and learn more about you and grow in relationship with one another. In your name we pray, amen. So we're about to have like the nerdiest five minutes that we've had at Second Place. You guys can be seated. We're going full out nerd this morning, you guys. So I need two volunteers who feel nerdy enough to come up here and participate in a little Pi Day competition. Do I have two volunteers? Come on. I mean, I don't know if it's fair if right. you're going against Krista, but who would like to take her on in our Pi Day competition? Maybe Alex? Do you want to go against your mom? I feel like this, no? <laughs> No. No. He's just like, no. Anybody? Come on. I need one more person. All right, Alex. Thanks, Alex. All right, so this is a pie, a pie competition quiz. We're going to see how much you guys know about pie. Let me ask the first question. Sure. So, the, to the best of your ability, how many digits of pie do you know? Don't look at her shirt. Not very many. Not very many. Oh. I know. Don't look, though. You can't look. 3.141929. Nope. nope. <laughs> she got four. 3.141229. Nope, nope, you tied. Yeah. Jonathan? Yes. We'll allow it. Yes. Very good. You should have volunteered. Too bad. <clears throat> All right, next question. You got okay, this one? Okay, so that was a tie. So that's one point each so far. Oh, we're scoring. Yeah, we'll give them a point okay, each. Yeah. Good idea. That'll, that'll work. Zero. No, no, it's good. You both got the same amount. Go. We're, we're in charge. All right. <laughs> Go ahead, ask the question. All right. Pi, first person to raise their hand for this oh. one. Because this is a speed, because it's, sure, not, like yeah, a, you're it's right. not like a who you're good. knows the most. All right. Pi is a ratio of what? Oh, Ooh. that was over there. The circumference of a circle over the diameter of the circle. Wow. Is he right? He is correct. That is correct. That was very good. That was quick. That was quick. All right, also, You've taught him well. Also, raise your hand for this one. You can read this one. Um, raise your hand when you know the answer. What's the last digit known of pi? Oh, I said that wrong. Yes, you did. Okay, let me say it again. What's the last digit of pi? There isn't one. Okay, very good. Because <laughs> technically there is a known, but we'll get down there. Right? We there, have one. I changed known. the question. Two, All right. Two. Next question. This will be whoever's closest. Wait, so what's our, what's our point total? It's uh, tied now, I think, yes, right? Yes, two to two. You guys each? Okay. All right. How many digits of pi are known as of 2020? Who's doing like pi? Yeah, whoever's closest. closest. Whoever's closest. Without going over? Or? You can go over. You can go oh. <laughs> Who invited? 30, 39,347. Okay, 39,000. Like, we'll round. Over a billion. Over a billion. A billion. Okay. Closest answer is, Krista, the correct answer is... 50 trillion digits have been yeah, calculated by a computer as of 2020. Trillion. All right. Last question. So, 3 2. Okay. So, there, if it's the last question, there's a chance he ties it up, but then is true. we're stuck. Uh, how many digits did the world record holder recite? So, m from memory, one human being, how many do you think they've remembered? 10,000. 10,000. 10,001, Bob. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the correct answer is over 100,000 digits of pi from memory. So, so we have a tie, but do you guys live in the same households? Yes? Okay, so we will share the prize as well. Your prize is, of course. A pie. A pie. So, congratulations. Give it up for our winners, Thank tied you. winners Thank you. of our Pi Day Challenge. And just a few Pi funnies for you. Pi is a ration, irrational number, which means it never repeats, it never ends. So, that will help you make sense of this um, little cartoon you should see here. The wife of Pi, one. He's irrational, and he goes on and on and on. You get it? Because it never, Not never, even never ends. See? 
you guys are missing out by not having more math people up here more often, you know? And, okay, a little bit about numbers. If you know anything about rational, real, imaginary numbers. It's an imaginary number? Sense. That's what the I stands yep. for? So he's telling Pi, okay, if we have to explain it, it's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Susan like sends these to me randomly because she finds them. She's like, I know nobody else is going to laugh at these, so she sends them my way. All right, is there math, any others? Math, math is funny. Okay. You guys don't know it, but math is funny. If you, if, yeah, so. Even when Joe was anyway. like, we need you two to, to open up, it was literally like Thursday or Friday, he told us. She sends me like a list of all these t-shirts that we, we should have bought in time and so that we could wear them up there. So if you need to see a couple, we got a couple of pie shirts over there. But Yes, I know. I feel sad that I don't It wasn't one. like, what are we going to talk about? She's like, look at all the shirts we could have been wearing. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay, so here's the other awesome pie day thing. Do you want to tell them? About my wife's the birthday? Challenge? No, the challenge. Oh. The challenge. <laughs> because not only is our dog's birthday, it's my wife's birthday. We, we have a picture of the dog, but I didn't put a picture of my wife up there. Um, so so if you see pretend Marisa. like we didn't we forget that part of the conversation. There's a challenge we're throwing down for today. It's Who? Tim Pelkey's birthday. Oh. Happy birthday, Tim. And nice. Marisa. Um, should, yes, should there's going to be a giving challenge today. Right. A giving challenge because our it's coming up on... Uh, we, some of us had done something at the end of the year for the building fund, and then some of us said, well, okay, we're going to push that and maybe give through April. So Easter is coming up quickly. That's our, our deadline. If you're like, what was it, April 1st? What was it? We're aiming for Easter. If you were someone that was like, I'm going uh, to commit to giving by then. And so we have a, a one-day, one-service-only challenge. I know, and I think you picked the service because you figured that people are going to sleep in and not come to first service. But the challenge is, if we can raise $1,000, so you guys online and in person, by the end of first service, we get to pie Joe in the face, live on Facebook this morning, before second service. So, if you were planning on giving to the building funds and want to write that check today instead of waiting till Easter, that would count. <laughs> No, no. And you picked the, the, just the hour change, too. You did it on purpose so that, like, yes. if the hour change, we lose a few people. But these people are committed to both morning service and the church. So we take building. cash, check. You can give via Zelle or push pay. I will check those accounts personally right after um, I'm done here, and I could check them throughout service to see if we get to that $1,000 marks. But who, who wants to see Joe get a pie in the face? Right? Who exactly. Doesn't? Especially That's with that question. beard, you know, like it's just, yeah. So if you would like to see that happen live this morning, we're going to pass the buckets. We don't do this normally, but for a pie day challenge, I feel like this is appropriate. This is a gimmick, but we're not above gimmicks here at Second Place. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, That's true. I think Jesus is okay with it, right? It's going towards the warehouse in the woods, the building fund. So, and we get the bonus of not only blessing the building funds, but also seeing Joe get a pie in the face. So, are we yeah. running the buckets? Or what? No, you guys just pass them. Never done. Just it. We haven't them. done it. Have we done this so in this building? It takes a thousand dollars. We'll let you guys know um, how far we get by the end of today. Um, but all of the money will go towards the building funds. So. Again, if you see Marisa, make sure you tell her happy birthday. Yes, and Tim as well. Tell her her picture looked beautiful up on the screen, uh, even though we didn't show one. All right, thank you, guys. We're done that fast. My bad, my bad. How are, how are you guys? That is a gimmick for sure. That is a gimmick. We're not above that. Um, I did pick first service, one service only, special. We'll live stream it if it happens. All good. Um, you know, before we start dialing into the topic for today, um, I wanted to give you guys a couple of things. There's a lot going on, man. Like, this is a busy season for church, like if you're a church out there. And, um, and if you are a follower of Jesus, also, my buddy Alex's birthday is Wednesday. Give it up for Alex. He is awesome. Yep. Yeah, you knew it. I'm just going to, I don't know if this is going to be centered, Ben, online, but this little wedgie thing is getting in the, in the way. I said wedgie. Um, so we've got some cool things that are happening. I wanted to make sure you guys knew about it. First off, um, if we had 68 people go to India this past week, 
It was awesome. Like we got to connect with all these different um, global workers in India, which was so, so cool. And we have, if you were a part of that experience, just a reminder that we have a debrief, kind of like our missions team debrief tonight on Zoom at five o'clock. And so we'd love to have everybody on that so we can share stories and talk about like how God is moving um, through that experience. So that's really cool. Um, also, give it up for Marisa Vales because this is her birthday. And... We're not going to sing, but I just wanted to tell you, um, you ha share a birthday with Tim Pelkey, who just ran away. I don't know where he went. Um, but um, you've been our children's director for, get up here, get up here. Come on, people online need to see your face, all right? So um, you've been our children's director for how many, how many years has it been? Do you even know? I do not. I'm terrible with dates. Yeah, so, so it's been years. It has been a and, long time. Um, and so... It is your birthday, and we have a gift that we're going to give you a little later that is going to be good. It involves um, maybe some of your favorite food, which is kind of fun. Okay. I'm excited for that because um, we share that. Italian food is a thing, yeah. so it's so good. Um, but I just wanted to say, like, thank you for being you Aww. and being awesome <laughs> and loving our kids, like, nobody else like I've ever seen. And so do you guys appreciate this, this woman or what? You're awesome, girl. And so happy birthday. Enjoy your day. I know this is the worst thing in the world for you. But as we're saying all day, Sarah's not here. So this is all good. <laughs> so give it up for Marisa one more time. I don't know how they got you up here. Yeah, there you go. I don't know how they got her up here because they were going to hopefully not lie to her like something was happening to, to you, Dave. I don't know. Um, we have an amazing opportunity today, actually. Um, I don't know if you guys saw this, but Kelly Detlaff, our provision lab, like awesome, um, awesome person. She has coordinated, uh, along with a partner, ShareFest, a uh, uh, food distribution at the Moni Village Hall today, starting around 11, 11.30. So if you guys are like, hey, you know what, we're not doing anything afterwards, or we're going to maybe grab something quick after service and want to head over there. Um, she's looking for 30 volunteers. There's um, folks that are coming out from the community that are helping as well. But this is just an amazing thing. It's actually a USDA food distribution, which means it's more fresh groceries, which is sometimes more difficult for us to get. And so the word is out and the community is coming. So if you're interested in serving that way today, you are welcome to do so. Um, also, I don't know about you, but Easter baskets are, are not a thing at my house. Like we've never done them. But we do partner with the, the Moni Alliance of Churches along with the village to create some Easter baskets for the community um, over Easter weekend. And those are given away and those are to bless um, the families um, in the community. And we put together five of those. Each church puts together five. And so Kelly, um, again, she's like our outreach person. She's, she's our local outreach person. She's going to be putting these together, and um, they, that, just, that thought of that just annoys me, but I know that somebody in this room or online might be, hey, you know what? I love putting together Easter baskets. That's my thing. Like, I just love it. And honestly, I've known people like this. That's why I'm offering it to you. Rather than, you know, just go get it done, I'm saying to you, if that's something that you love to do and you'd, lo you'd love to bless the community by putting together an Easter basket, let me know and we will definitely connect you and make that happen and allow you to serve that way. Um, awesome things happening on Friday nights from 8 to 9. This past Friday night, we had another Friday night special time of prayer, and it was awesome. We had, the tw we had twice as many people this past Friday as we had the week before, and um, it's just pretty laid back. We had some music playing. We had about 25 people here just praying the house down. It was so good. We had a huge contingent of students that came out, and I would want to invite you guys out that during the month of March, on Fridays from 8 to 9, we're going to be here and we're going to be praying. So if you want to pray with your second place family, if you have a prayer need, it is an awesome time to come on out and pray together. Um, okay, so now we're talking, now we're all the way up to Easter. You guys know the peeps are like, uh, are what I love. And Katie Brundage is just keeping the fresh supply of them coming to me. I don't even get to eat all the ones from last week, you know. 
And it reminds me of Easter, and I want you guys to know what we're planning for Easter. It's going to be a really great weekend, an opportunity for you to invite family and friends, um, invite them to watch online with you or to come out. I have got a message that is kind of quirky, and it's, it's called Easter Jeopardy, all right? Easter Jeopardy. I think we have a, a cheesy graphic. I don't know if it's there. There you go. Um, and so Easter Jeopardy is really about this idea that we all are living our lives in a way that is the answer to a question. Like we're, we're and if you guys know Jeopardy, you answer in the form of a question, right? And so we live our lives. And so I think what that weekend is about is about what is the question that we're answering with our lives? And I'm excited because there's Jeopardy, right? And then there's double jeopardy. And then there's final jeopardy. And so um, it's going to be a great, great weekend. And I would love for you guys to invite folks out. It's going to be kind of quirky and kind of fun. I'm, we may even have a jeopardy contest happen that day. Um, but after Easter, we are, we are starting a new series that is super exciting and super fun. And it is a series that is actually something that several of us went through online, um, I think it was pre-COVID. It was uh, just like six of us that were going through this study, and it is so, so good, and it's super practical. Um, it is called, I said this, you heard that, all right? I said this, you heard that, and it is based on some research and temperaments, and primarily it's based on a Bible passage, a scripture that you guys probably know, and I'll reveal that in the next couple of weeks. But I think, Ben, do we have a video? Can we, Johnny, can we get some audio up on a video real quick um, and see kind of what this looks like? People to the core. Figuring out what you said and what they heard and eliminating this gray area in between. By you understanding your authentic wiring, you'll become the very best version of yourself. What we will be learning about is temperaments, which is the why behind your personality. I've invited some people to join me. My name is Tony. I'm 26. I'm Andrew, 25. I'm Jeremy. I'm 40. I'm Leslie. It's none of your business what my age is. <laughs> Remember, our strengths and weaknesses are choices. We're gonna recreate real life situations and conflicts. Learning the temperaments will change everything. All of your relationships, every decision you make, and every word you speak. This is gonna be a fun journey. Series is uh, the, the six of us or so, Amy actually went through it. Also Amy's birthday tomorrow. <laughs> Just birthdays everywhere, man. Um, Amy went through it. Um, it was just a powerful study, and, and so we're going to create our little four-week series out of it, and it's going to be an awesome opportunity as you have family and friends that may attend on Easter to kind of continue coming and learning about, like, how to communicate with a spouse, with family, with, you know, boss, whatever it might be. It's powerful. It's really good. And also, we are going to be kicking off our connect groups that week. So again, we're kind of like creating some momentum around Easter, and then right after Easter, we are going to um, kick off our connect groups with this four-week series. So here's what I want you to consider and to pray about now, is that maybe God's been saying, you know what, I, last week's message, you know what, I want to be seen, I want to be heard, I want to be known and loved. Maybe the way that you could begin to create that for yourself is to create some space in your home or online, but in your home or online where people could come together and begin to talk about that four-week series. So this is a, just an, a request on, from me to you to prayerfully consider opening your home for just those four weeks, kind of test out what, you, uh, what that might look like for you to have a connect group in your home or online. And we will definitely have all kinds of resources to make it easy. There's videos, and it's just a great, great kind of four-week opportunity. Are you guys down? Thank you for considering that. It is so good. All right, so I guess we should talk about Jesus, right? Amen. Yeah, let's do it. So today I'm going to be talking about this question right here. How do I fit in? I I'm, I'm wrote it so you could ask it when you read it. Like, how do I fit in? 
How do I fit in? Now, before I go into the message, I want to tell you a story about something that happened probably 15 years ago. Now, sports, for me, I'm, I'm kind of more of like, I have more of a coach mindset, more of a teacher. I, I'm, I'm less of like fire and brimstone and you know, dangle you over hell with a rotten stick kind of guy. But I see sports and it, there's illustrations in them that I love. And so about 15 years ago, we, um, back when we used to go to the office for work, we actually had a uh, company football game. And um, in this particular situation, um, I was quarterback and for no good reason. And um, a buddy of mine, Freddie, who um, is, I still work with now, and he, he still speaks into second place and, and, and what's going on here, which is awesome, he was on my team. And so what was awesome, that's Probably this. We got it. Okay. We, he, he was on my team, and we were, um, it was kind of a tie game, and it was at the end of the game, and the goal for me was, like, we wanted to win this game, right? So we come over to the little huddle, and we draw up a play where I'm like, all right, here's the deal, Freddie. What I want, now he's, he's, a, he's, we call him the silver fox, mainly because he's, like, 10 or 15 or 20 years older than me, and he's, you know, got gray hair. We call him the silver fox. He's not super tall, but he's super fast, all right? He was super fast. So I told Freddie, I was like, here's what I want you to do, man. I want you to run down here. And he had a big, tall guy, Tim, that was covering him. And I was like, dude, I need you to juke him, and then I need you to go to the end zone, and I'm a, there was a sewer cap in the middle of the grass. I was like, I am going to throw this ball, and I'm going to hit that sewer cap. And if you're there, dude, we're going to win this game. And so I, we get up to the line of scrimmage. We hike the ball. I'm looking. I'm looking. And here goes Freddie down the sideline. He's shooting down there. He jukes Tim. Tim goes one way. Freddie goes the other. He cuts. And all of a sudden, he, I throw it to the sewer cap, and Micah caught it. Freddie caught the ball in the end zone. It's legendary. Fred and I talk about it all the time. It was one of these moments where I was like, yes, we celebrated. It was so, so, so good. Why did I tell that story? You'll find out in a minute. Let's talk about how you fit in, right? How you fit in can be all kinds of different ways, right? Think about the world. You've got, I mean, I've got a list here. You guys can shout some things out. Like fitting in, you know, you have to have kind of a certain level of cool factor, right? That can be a thing in the world. Um, how much money you have, like if you have a certain amount of money, then you can maybe go to this country club or maybe you can uh, live in this subdivision. Um, you ever know the saying, like, it's not what you know, it's who you know. who you know? So the way that you fit in is by who you know. Anybody got any others? Give me, give me something. Comment online as well. Let us know. Your title. I have down, yeah, position. Like, you, you, you start, you know, you're kind of like cleaning toilets, and then all of a sudden you become the boss one day. And you fit in because, well, you're the boss. Anybody else got one? Yeah, like what you drive, like that has a status to it. I have down status. I have that where it's like, hey, man, whoa, look at you. Like you're, and like, you know, people who drive certain cars, they have like little clubs and they're like cool and you can fit in that way and all that, right? Um, awesome. Maybe it's like the zip code or the subdivision or the subdivision of the subdivision that you live in that is, makes you fit in and be super cool or whatever. But then let's turn the tides a little bit to church. Hey. How do you fit in at church? Well, let me just start us off because I want you to think about it and give me some ideas. Sometimes you walk into a new church and you're just like, how does everybody act here? Like, do they raise their hands here? Do they wear suits and ties Sunday best? Or do they just kind of come as they are? And, and how, do, how do they talk? How do they act? Right? So we, we need to act a certain way to fit in when it comes to church. Another one that I have down is that um, you need to attend certain things in order to fit in. Like if you're at this, you know, get together or you're here on the weekend or whatever, the way that you fit in is by attending certain things. Anybody got anything else? Help me out. Make it as awkward as you want. What's that? Who's your circle? Like, yeah, exactly. Like, who, do you, who are you hanging out with at the church, and how do you kind of connect in that? Yep, somebody said your age, right? Yeah, 
I've had people at second place, they come in, they're like, hey, I'd love to come here, but I can't because I, I'm literally the oldest person in the room. I can't do it. And I'm like, I, I feel you and I feel young. So I stick around because it makes me feel like I'm in eighth grade again. All right. Um, not always a good thing, but Sarah's not here. We're good. Um, what about like if you give a certain amount? Oh, then you fit in, right? Oh, you give a certain amount. That's interesting. Um, what about if you just, hey, man, the way you fit in is you serve. And the more you serve, the awesomer you are and the more you fit in. Um, anybody got any other ones? Your clothes, yeah. I mean, that kind of creeps in from the world for sure. Absolutely. A lot of things kind of, yeah. I, I think another one that's on the spiritual side is like, you know what? If you read your Bible tons, then you fit in. Because everybody's telling me, Joe's saying, you know, read your Bible, read your Bible. Ever, anybody ever feel pressure about that? Like the way that you fit in, the way that I fit in? How about prayer? Like I need to pray However long, every day, I need to pray more in order to fit in here. Do you guys ever feel pressure either from a pastor or even here? Like you feel like pressure sometimes, right? And the, the pressure is around how do I fit in? Today what I want to do is I want to give you um, a, a couple of thoughts that I think will surprise you about what I think and how I think that you fit in. Now, if you're watching online or you're here today, here's what I'll tell you. These are, I really can't speak for other churches, right? Not my place, um, not my circus, not my monkeys. But in terms of second place and in terms of getting inside here, which is scary, right? If you get inside here and in my heart, what I think and how I think that you fit into second place is something that may surprise you. And the way that I would say it is that you fit in when you are a work in progress. And here's what's amazing about this idea to me, is I literally could let you choose any scripture that you want, any story, any personality, any account, you could go anywhere in scripture and I can preach this message. Because God is a God of process. The way that we fit in is when we are in process. When we are a work in progress. In, in my world, that's called a whip. A WIP, a work in progress. We would always say like, hey, this is just a work in progress right now. I wanted to show this to you, but hey, don't get too crazy. Um, and so there are so many ways to see how God uses process in us. Um, let's just uh, start going through the alphabet here. So last week, does anybody remember what we talked about? There were four things, four things that really genuine community feels like. Barb, you got them? Yeah, seen, known. I got a spell. This is always good. One letter is heard and loved. Did I do that right? Oh, well, there aren't you guys studious. Well, five gold stars. Man, don't you guys wish you fit in like they do, you know? All right, so <laughs> messing with you guys, I love it. All right, so do you guys see this process? So typically what happens, and this is where I have the mic and you guys don't, it's so unfair. All right, so seen, typically the process starts by you being seen right? You show up to something. I see you. I see you. Okay, cool. Awesome. But the process doesn't stop there. The process then typically, now it's not always this way. Sometimes like I meet people, I'm like, I hear them first. I'm like, who is that? But typically it's, I see somebody. Then the second step is I hear, I, I hear somebody really, this is probably out of, out of step. We go to heard, we see, we hear, and then we begin to know somebody and then love somebody. Do you guys see the process? 
There's a process when it comes to being seen, heard, known, and loved. Now, there's all kinds of ways to look at this. Um, a way that we had a, a student meeting, a student coach meeting last Sunday, and I, I talked about process with them a little bit. They didn't know. I didn't realize I would bring this up today, but here you go. Um, there's also a process that I just call ABC. And there's a process that God takes us through many times where the first word, A, is align, where God aligns our heart with his heart. You'll see this throughout scripture. King David, you'll see preparation happening in his life. You know, you'll see all kinds of things where he is aligning with the heart. You'll see this in all kinds of different places where, you know, we kind of like left to our own devices. We, we go off the rails. And what God does is he aligns our heart with his heart. Have you guys ever felt that before? Now, once that happens and we start to like flow and, and we feel like we're, uh, and I, again, we're not perfect every day. That's not the point. But the idea is that we, are all, we understand that there's an alignment happening. The second, the B, is breakthrough. Let's see if I can fit this. It's going to be tight. Everybody say, oh, no. All right. It's Breakthrough. That when you are uh, beginning to be more and more aligned with what God's doing in your, in your life, in his heart with your heart, in your heart with his heart, then you start to pray and start to see breakthroughs in your life in specific areas. You'll start to see that, oh, now all of a sudden I'm starting to see a breakthrough in my marriage because I got myself aligned with the Lord. I see a breakthrough in this struggle that I've had for years. Why? Because I've started to align what, who God says I am instead of what people say I am or what have you. And that there's a breakthrough that happens. Do you guys feel that? That there's a process. Like it's difficult to jump to, we want to jump to breakthrough, right? But when we do that, we skip this alignment and the breakthroughs are tougher. And then the last C is clarity. Once we start to see that there are breakthroughs in our life, then we start to see that there's some clarity around how God wants to use us in the world. He wants to use our story. He wants to use what God's done to align us. He wants to use what God's broken through in our lives, like in the areas where we've started to see some progress. And then he, again, we start to see like, okay, I'm more clear about God's purpose for my life and what he wants to do with my story. Do you guys see the process. This is one way to look at it. This is another way to look at it. Um, in the residency, um, we go through a book called Home Run, and there's a, there's a process that, that they talk about. And the first is that we connect first. And this is really connecting to our purpose, connecting to um, who God says we are. Um, and then the second thing that God moves us, and once we connect with our purpose, then there's, whoop, didn't mean to do that. Hmm. How do we fix that? I'm just going to send it like that. All right, we're just going to figure it out. It's character, character. That God begins to work in our character. Oh, boy, I'm messing it up. Um, and so then the third C is community. We start to reach out as God works on the inside of us. We start to work in community and to connect and win with people. Um, and then the fourth one, the fourth one is competence. And we start to see that there is um, outcomes and there are things that are happening. Competence. Didn't leave enough room. And so there's a process that this book talks about connecting and then character, then community, and then competence. You see that there's a process. There are a bazillion ways to look at it. Um, there's a process that, that God takes you through in um, this idea of John 139, John 143, Matthew 419, and John 15, 16. Before I talk about that, here's what I mean by just cracking open scripture and seeing what God does in terms of process. Um, if you just were to open up, and, I, and I'm cheating because I looked at this ahead of time. What you like when I prepare? Um, you look at the book of Mark, okay? You look at the book of Mark, and it is fascinating and I, all I want to do is I'm not going to read, wait for it, I'm not going to read actual scripture. I'm going to read the headings that some person added. So 
we look at, like, when you start in, um, towards the end of chapter 1, um, Jesus announces the good news. Jesus calls his first disciples. Jesus drives out an impure spirit. Jesus heals many. Jesus prays in a solitary place. That's all just chapter 1. Jesus, in chapter 2, Jesus forgives and heals a paralyzed man. Jesus calls Levi and eats with sinners. Jesus questioned about fasting. Jesus heals on the Sabbath. Crowds follow Jesus. Jesus appoints the 12. Jesus is accused by his family and by the teachers of the law. And then he goes into storytelling about a parable of the sower, a lamp on a stand, the parable of the growing seed. Jesus calms the storm. Jesus restores a demon-possessed man. Jesus raises a dead girl and heals a sick woman. Do you guys see what I'm talking about? talking about. When you just skim through the cliff notes of the gospel of Mark, what you see is you see process. You see progress. Do you guys see that? Do you see that the word of God is designed in his story? Jesus brings, he's the center of the process. Did you guys catch that? Jesus is the center of the process. Um, in uh, these passages that are on the, on the board, Jesus has a very specific way that he brings his followers, his disciples through in, in, in becoming fully devoted to him. First of all, he has this first step where it's come and see. This, this step, this is that first step. This is a great Easter understanding. This is when we create a, a, a message about Easter jeopardy. When we create a series about I said this, you heard that. Guess what? Typically, sure, there's going to be a benefit for you in that. But primarily, I am looking and I am saying to your friends and your family and anyone in the community that will listen, hey, are you curious about what's going on? I would just love it for you to come and see. That's all Jesus said. Hey, come and see what I'm all about. Come on, check this out. And let me show you what my kingdom is all about. This first step is about curious. I would say that in a room like this and online that there are people in the room and online that are in this step. They're in this step of being, hey, you know what, I'm kind of curious about the things of God. I don't really know about how I apply it all to my life and if I want to, but I'm curious. Man, stick around is what I say to you. And get ready for those of you that are further in the process to say, you know what, who in my life might be curious and I might need to invite them to come and see. Um, the second step you'll see in Scripture, he invites the disciples to follow me. He says, follow me. This is not about curiosity. This is about commitment. This is about the disciples saying, I want to be discipled. I want to learn from Jesus. I want Jesus to be my rabbi is how they would have thought about it. They would have thought about this. And, and so they begin to make a deeper level commitment in, in a room like this and online. There are people that are in this step. They're in this step of saying, you know what, I, I'm, I'm committing my life to Jesus. Every week I believe that we recommit, every day we recommit our life to follow Jesus. Teach me, God, about how to navigate my life. Teach me, God, about what's going on. Help me figure this out. I need your wisdom. I need your help. I need that. And, Lord, you have the, the words of life. And so speak to me. Follow me. Follow me. The F is all about the idea of he says, hey, I want to make you um, I want to help you go out and fish. I want you to not just be about being committed to me, but being committed to me, there's another step to that, is that I want to show you how to be fishers of men. I want to show you what it's like to reach people who are far from me and bring them and love them into community like we learned last week. He says, hey, I want to teach you how to fish, not the way you've always fished, but I want to teach you about how to fish for people. Now, in a room like this and online, there are people that are in this step. You have been devoted to Jesus. You've made a commitment. And, and the challenge for you today is to realize that there's another step. That there is, Jesus wants to teach you about how to impact other people. 
He wants you to, to, to learn how do, we, how do we reach those that are, we're working with? How do we reach those that are in our family that are far from God? And we need God's wisdom on that. We're not supposed to just stick around and follow Jesus. And sometimes I think that that's a big thing. Sometimes I think that we decide that what we're going to do is we're going to serve. Like it's a big line, man. I've been attending second place for like a year or two or ten. And now I'm going to step out, bro. And I'm going to like, I'm going to serve. And oh my gosh, you've served, you're serving. Thank you so much. And yes, this place doesn't run without our volunteers, right? But serving is not the end all be all. It checks a box for you, sure. I want everybody at second place to serve, absolutely. It's part of following him. It's part of that step. But the fishing part is a whole nother level, right? I got to talk about my faith with people. Excuse me? That's a little, that's a little like, you know, abrasive in our culture these days. How do I do that? How do I do that with family and friends who are seeing a change in your life? But here's what's amazing. Some of us are still following Jesus, and there's a second, there's a third step, but there's a fourth step too. And it's about this idea of bearing fruit. He says in John 15, you can look at it. Um, John 15, he talks, and we, we will look at it. He talks about this idea of bearing fruit. Um, let me pray. Jesus, Lord, you're, you're here right now, and you're challenging me, and we're, you're challenging all my friends right now with your process. And so, God, I pray right now that you would speak to us, and all the other voices would be quiet. In Jesus' name. Jesus says this to his disciples. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Everyone say, no fruit. fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. Oh, that's not fun. You mean like if I jump to this step, he's going to prune my life? Okay, great. So that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. Did you hear that? No branch can bear fruit in this step. You cannot do that by yourself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Everyone say much fruit. fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Here is what's crazy, guys, is that there's a process inside a process You see, we might be like serving the Lord, following the Lord, doing our devos, reading our Bible, praying a a storm at home. Awesome, good deal, awesome, love it. And and you're you're, you're maybe like being challenged with this idea of fishing. And now I'm saying that within the fruit step of that process, if you look at John 15, there's a process in the process that says you're going to bear fruit, and then you're going to bear more fruit. And if you remain in me, you're going to bear much more fruit. Like, is that awesome or what? Like, Jesus just unpacks it in a way that says there is more, there is more, there is more. And we are sitting here going, well, you know what? I mean, went to church. How do I fit in? You fit in when you are a work in progress. I don't care if you look at it in this messed up way here or this way or this way or this way. I don't really care. But what I do care about is that you are in motion, that you are moving. Twice this week, people didn't know what I was speaking about. And what they said to me in not in exact, actually almost the exact same thing, they said that souls are never in neutral. You guys are wondering what this is. You guys look at this every day when you get in your car. Park, reverse, neutral, drive, second gear, first gear. You're welcome. 
Tom's like, PRND21? Look, neutral is not an option when you're a believer. I don't even care if you're idling. Like, take, if you've got, like, if Sarah was here, and she's not, if Sarah was here, she would say, but Joe, rest. Don't make it all about doing. Cool. Awesome. Yes, I agree. I agree. I, 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 I get it. We definitely need to rest. But being at rest does not, does not mean that you are in neutral because God is continuing to do a work and he's continuing to do a process in you when you are, even if you are in drive with your foot off the gas, how many of you know that you still keep going, right? Because there's something at work inside the car that keeps you moving. You see, I believe that there are so many of us, every single week, I am trying to call a play. And I am saying, shoot down the sideline, juke the devil, and go to the sewer cap, and I'm going to throw you the ball. And if you're there, man, we're going to win the game. And how many times... Have you ever played, if you played football, and somebody runs a route and they stop running? It is so frustrating, right? Because you throw the ball and there's no one there. Because they stop running. The way that you fit in is that you keep running that route. God wants to, to do things in your life. He wants, to, he wants to win that game. He wants to win the day. He wants to sometimes win the moment. And when you stop and you say, I'm out of the process, I'm not going to be in process anymore, it doesn't matter. I'll tell you right now, it's when I start to, I feel it, man. I feel it. I'm like, whoa, I feel the separation. And I don't know about you, but it's just a weird thing for me. But when I feel that, I'm like, how does God feel? When he feels his kids disengage from the process. And he's like, man, I'm running. The, I got this play all drawn up on the board and no one's, no one's running. I wasn't going to tell this story. It's, it's kind of a weird one. But um, there's a, I used to like, <laughs> Mike and I used to coach, <laughs> Mike used to coach baseball, <laughs> you know, with, with uh, and I was like helping him. And like, I like to think I was a coach, but I was just like, hey, what's up, guys? Um, coach third base. No one ever gets there. Um, so I remember, I remember a kid named Sean, who was our leadoff uh, hitter. Do you remember him? Little kid. And man, he was super fast. So you want him leading off, right? And Man, when he was on, he could, it just seemed like he could just get like that, just get a, a, a ball to get through the infield, man. And then it's like anybody's game because these kids are like, oh, a ball, I don't know what to do. And then he might get to second, you know, and not even just get a single. And you get your leadoff man on, on base, and it's like amazing because you start to like work and start to see that you're going to score some, some runs, right? You guys with me? So... There would be this point where uh, I remember this day when Sean, this is a seat, like, a, like a few weeks, uh, um, where Sean, he would go up to, to the plate, lead off. And it's hard because you're the first kid to see the pitcher, your first kid to get like a ball thrown at your head or whatever, and you're up there. And, you know, and he struck out. And he just throws the bat down. He's like, this sucks. Oh, this is the worst. I don't. And he walks in and he's all dejected. And I'm watching this. So the, the lineup flips over. He's up there again, you know, maybe the second or third inning, and he gets up there, and he strikes out again. And he comes over, and he's like, this is bogus, blah, you know, whatever. And I said, Sean, I said, dude, you need to get mad up there, man. You need to get, like, focused, dude. You need to, like, not, don't worry about the pitcher. And I was like, and I, and, and I, I was like the, 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 um, the team psychologist, right, that really demented psychologist, like mad scientist level. And so he gets up there, and I was like, he needs, like when he, 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 came, to, he came to a game one time, I remembered this, and this is why I brought this up. He came to a game one time, and he was so ticked off about something his mom said or did or whatever, took away like his Game Boy or something, and he gets up there, and he crushed a double. 
And I'm like, dude, you need to get mad again. Like, listen. And so I remembered that story. And so the third time he gets up there, he's getting ready to get in the, the batter's box. And I go, hey, Sean. He's like, what? I go, your hamster died just now. He's like, yeah, demented. I get it. I get it. He didn't even have a hamster. And he just looks at me, he goes, <sighs> he gets up there and he hit a single. And I was like, let's go. Like, this is, this is kind of the deal. Like, we have to realize that Sean was in a process. And so are we. And we get up and we get into the batter's box and we strike out and we're like, oh man, this is bogus. Like, God is, is not even with me. Here's the thing. Get back into the batter's box. Take another pitch. Get mad at the devil and see how God might use you. If you stay, if you stop, if you quit the game, if you stop, you, there's nothing that can happen. But if you stay in process, if you stay a work in progress, here's what I need you to know. Don't, don't make me be perfect. Let me, do whatever you want, because you're going to do it anyway. Just let me, let me be in process, if it's okay. If, if it's okay, if I can be in process, I can continue to do what I do. But as soon as there's a, an extra, like, thing that needs to be done or an extra, you know, benchmark that has to be hit or something like that, where I can't be in process, I can't be a work in progress anymore, I'm out. Because being a work in progress is how I fit in here. And it's how you fit in here. Is because we all know that we're not perfect and we're in process. And when we say, God, you are not a part of the process, or we say, oh, I know that Mark's headings that some person put in there are all about Jesus, but I know that the God that's in my imagination is the God that makes me feel like I need to be perfect and I need to do everything right and I need to do everything right the first time and I'm not allowed to, to explore and learn and discover what it means to follow him. I have to do everything perfect and when you get there, it becomes about performance and it becomes about a God that does not exist in scripture. The God of Scripture is a God, is, is Jesus, and he's with you. He's with you, and he's, he's with you next to all of the garbage in your life. And he's saying, you know what? I don't need you to be perfect. I need you to trust me through the process. Nani's Uncle Ray said it. He said this. He said that Jesus will pull you through a knot hole if you can stand the pull. And I think some of us feel like we're getting pulled through a knot hole sometimes. <laughs> the band can come up. I've gone too long. But we're going we're gonna to worship Jesus who is at the center. We are going to see God continue to do this work. Are we good? Are we good? Are you guys with it? Are you guys, do you guys catch what I'm throwing down today? Anybody? Yes? Where are you in the process? Can I send this your way? Where are you in whatever process, however you want to look at it, however you want to draw it up on the board yourself, where are you in the process? Because that is how you fit in. Let's stand together. Jesus came. Jesus gave his life. Jesus showed us the way so that we could be in process. And so, Lord, as we come before you to sing and, Lord, to worship you, God, I pray that you would continue your process in us. Every single one of us, a work in progress. Lord, I pray that whatever step that we feel that we're in, whatever process we're in, Lord God, whatever you're speaking to our hearts, that we would simply take the next step. Lord, that for those of us that are in neutral today, that we would, we would kick it into drive, Lord God, and maybe not even press the gas, but to just simply, simply engage the process. 
God, thank you for making a way for this to be possible. Thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in my heart and what you're doing in the hearts of all those that are here and that are online right now. And Lord, we just pray that you would be blessed as we sing. In Jesus' name. my name He knows my name He knows my name He knows my name Oh how he walks with me
As we continue to worship um, through this last song, um, I wanted to give you like an image to be thinking about. Um, so in an orchestra, uh, before a performance, there has to be a tuning that happens um, with every instrument. And the problem is some instruments um, are easy to tune and some are not. And so a piano, for instance, is really hard to tune in the moment. You're not gonna be able to do that. And so everybody in the orchestra tunes to the piano. The piano plays the note, and no matter if it's a little out of tune or not, that's what we're tuning to, because that's what's steady. And I think oftentimes, uh, when we think about reaching out to people and starting to fish, uh, you know, there's people that don't know what an in-tune life looks like with God, to be in like, that state. And so we might be playing a violin in our, our hypothetical lives, but that's who the people see. So if we are not tuning to the piano of God to say that I'm going to tune to you, no matter if I think I'm in tune or not, I got to go with you. Um, and that, those people might never hear or see that piano physically, but they see it through you. And so as we sing this last song, we're talking about who the Lord is. It's an act of tuning to who He is and, and being able to come out now after this service and represent Him. So let's do it.
How he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground, it makes me want to shout. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, and Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he That, I wish that we could sing that song with different words. Like, go to the first slide, Ben. Ben, can you go to the first slide? Help me out, help me out. Where are we at? He's going to get there, folks. Maybe.
He's got it. When I think about the Lord and how he saved me, right? And how he raised me. I wish that we could sing a version of that song that said, how he's saving me and how he's raising me. Go to the next slide. How he's filling me with the Holy Ghost and how he's healing me to the uttermost. Like it's past tense in the song and I get it. But when you get to the chorus, right? It says what? It makes me want to shout. But the reason that I want to shout is because it's in, it's in a process. It's happening to me. It's happening. And so maybe that's where you're at today is realizing, that, yes, we, we celebrate what God has done, but we celebrate what God is doing in us and through us. And so I was singing those words when you were singing those ones up there. I was singing the other words. And, and so this week, second place, may you be those people that you are in process. I look, by the way, I look up here and I, I see, this, now this won't always be the case, but I see process because I know all these people. And, and for now, we're at a size where that's cool. Like I can know everybody. But like, I look at Joy, like years been here, just cranking through school, faithful. Micah, I don't even want to talk about you, but you got process all crazy. Grace and Hannah and Josh, all, this is the Moody team. They're all students at Moody Bible right now. And they're here on their last day of spring break. And, and they're like in process. I've known this girl, she's my niece. I've known her since she's baby, you know. Hannah, you said like 10 words to me this whole time, but you sing like an angel up here. Like it's amazing the process that I've seen you go through. Are you guys with me on this? I'm like, what, what is that? And then Josh, I don't even want to talk about it, man. The process you've been in through. Noah, you, you've been playing the guitar in your room and I've been listening to it and it did not always sound great. But look at you, process, man. Alex, same thing. I used to know you when you were clean shaven, process, you know? Eric, there's things about process that people will never know about your story, man. It was awesome to see process. Every single one of us are in process. Don't forget that. So as you go second place, may you be people of process and understand and know and be curious about where you are in that process and may the Lord be with you in that process. May he be real to you and may he continue to walk with you through that process. Be light in dark places this week and go out there and change the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Love you guys, have a great week. Oh, no, whoa, time out, I need verification. Did it happen? It happened? Straight up, all right, if you weren't here, what is that? Oh man, like this is happening. All right. This is a wonderful time. Joe looks sincerely concerned that he's getting pie to the face right now. All right, so our goal was $1,000. When we had less than 100 people, I think, here, we raised $1,600 for service. So great job. All going towards the building fund. Remember, the goal for that is if you, you, you say you're going to give, we're aiming for Easter. So we got about four more Sundays until that time. Oh, yeah. It is Pi Day. On a Sunday until 2027. 2027 will be the next Pi Day on Sunday. That'll be the next Pi to the face for Joe. So, 3.14, 15, That's all I know. Oh, yeah, no mic. Yeah. <laughs> this is a pie in the face because you raised over a thousand dollars for service.
In Jesus' name. <laughs> hey!